Let's wrap up April. All right, hey guys. If you guys have been following me on my Discord or possibly on Twitter, X, whatever you want to call it, you guys might have seen that I have been suffering through a little bit of YouTube burnout. We're not going to talk about that here, but I'm going to go ahead and wrap up April and then we can talk a little bit at the end about some of the things that might be changing here very soon. But I want to make sure that you guys get what you came here for today <laughs> and then we can move on to other things. But in the month of April, I read nine books, DNF'd one. I've been sticking with fantasy for quite some time. So I do believe all of these are fantasy. Nope, I have one sci-fi and I haven't been vlogging. So I'm going to go ahead and do this like a normal wrap up where I review every book. In the month of April, I also read 3,311 pages. My reading has not been all that high this year so that I'm counting that as good. <laughs> I usually average four to five thousand and so I do think that it has to do with a lot of the stress I've been going through. There is a fly in my library and some things that I've been dealing with and we'll talk about that again like at the end of the video. And I started this month off preparing to do a vlog for you guys of arcs that I had. Well I ended up getting sick and when I say getting sick I mean I had a lot of really bad PCOS issues this month, which has led to some of my stress. I've been kind of out of commission longer than I like, and the stress keeps building up, which makes the PCOS worse. So <laughs> that's where I am. But in that vlog, I read four books. So since you guys missed out on that, I definitely want to touch on those. And then I did do a vlog for reading what my patrons recommended. So when I get to those books, I'll kind of gloss over them a little bit. And if you want a more in-depth view of those, then you can go watch that vlog. I will try to link it down below. You know, I'm not really good at remembering to do that, but I will make the attempt. Then I kind of just rounded that out with a book that I've been dying to read for quite some time. So I am fairly happy with what I read because it's off my shelf, but my ratings for everything kind of like landed right around three stars. So yay. <laughs> okay. So for the first book that I read this month, that would be The Longest Autumn by Amy Avery. Now I really enjoyed this one. However, there were some things I thought made it slow. But we have a girl who is from our world who actually takes a position working for the gods. So she is closely entwined with the god of autumn and they have to perform the changing of the seasons. And to do so, they have to stand in front of this mirror and kind of walk through to the Fey realm and present the new season. And whenever they're attempting to perform this ritual, the mirror shatters, which is why it's called the longest autumn, because Autumn is forced to stay behind and can't herald in the new season. And it's really interesting the way that the lore is explored in this story. However, I didn't really like the main character. I, I thought that she made some pretty bad decisions and that she was kind of flighty. <laughs> but she takes it upon herself to figure out how to fix this mirror and doesn't really want any help from anybody. However, there's no way she's going to be able to get around having help to fix this mirror because she's not magical herself. So I liked the relationship between her and Autumn. I liked the relationship between her and another person in the story. I can't remember the, the guy's name, but it is, sex is kind of non, a non-issue, a non-thing. <laughs> Everybody is open about it and free with sharing. <laughs> So that's not anything to like make me say, oh, I didn't like this one. Like there's no real love triangle there. But anyway, her ties to Autumn also make her a shepherd of the dead. And because she is not able to shepherd these dead to the other side, like she is supposed to, uh, there has been a buildup of ghouls and ghoulish activity while Autumn is left behind. And being the god that he is, he is very unhappy about this, but the longer he stays in the human realm, the more human he becomes, and it's becoming a problem. So, like I said, there were elements to this that I really liked. There were elements that I didn't really like. I felt that it was very slow. I felt that it was repetitive in places, 
but I really liked the writing and for the most part I liked the characters. I just wasn't a big fan of the main character which brought the rating of the book down a bit. Would I recommend this book? I'm not sure. If you like slow paced books, if you're looking for something to read that fills that fall vibe, that autumn vibe, then I do think that this would be a good choice. I don't think it would be a great choice, but I am happy that I read it. Even though I gave it a 3.5, I do think that if it were a series, I would continue to see how the writing improved and possibly see some new characters join the mix. All right, the next book that I read would be Ghost Station by S.A. Barnes. Now, I love Dead Silence. It was one of my favorite books of last year. You guys have seen me talk about it quite a few times with my end of the year content. However, I wasn't the biggest fan of this one. This one is about a girl who goes to help these people who need some kind of direction with their mental health. She's a therapist and she is not the best pick to be sent out to help these people because she's dealing with mental health problems herself. But she's determined to solve the mystery of why this thing keeps happening to people who get left in these small excursions <laughs> into these vast places. But they go a little crazy and so she's there to help this team from doing that. They get there to the place that they're going and they see that it's kind of been abandoned. There was a crew there before, things are not as they should be, and there's a lot of stuff left behind that shouldn't have been left behind if these people actually survived. Then things start happening to the crew. Are they mentally unstable? Is there something in the air? We don't know. All we know is that the characters that are currently there are having to solve quite a few mysteries when they get there. And these crew members are very reluctant to trust the main character because one of their crew members has already died and basically they just walked off into the nether <laughs> and never to be seen again. And our main character being a therapist, they don't want to talk to her about it. They don't want to talk to her about what happened. They don't want to admit that maybe she was kind of feeling some kind of way and no one thought to seek uh, mental health professionals for them so they're reluctant but it does get a little creepy it does read a little slow and so <laughs> I had a few issues with this um, my main issue with this one though was definitely the fact that the therapist that was supposed to be helping these people was probably not in the best mindset to do so and therefore made everything that she tried to do seem a little selfish seem a little off-putting and so I gave this one a 3.5 as well. Next on my reading arcs that I was behind on, I read The Tainted Cup by Robert Jackson Bennett. As you can see by the fact that I own this book, <laughs> I loved it. I had to go buy a physical copy. Somehow my physical copy got damaged before I even got it home. I have no idea how this happened. It was not like that when I bought it. So I don't know if I bumped into something or what happened. Anyway. The Tainted Cup, Robert Jackson Bennett. This is Sherlock and Watson meets Attack on Titan. And that's all I can really <laughs> say about it other than we have a detective and her cohort. The detective is really kind of addicted to a substance you could call an opiate, but not really because it's a fantasy world. And they're brilliant though. So she gets this case, sends her <laughs> assistant to investigate and report back and they come to find out that something is happening with the walls and the leviathans are breaking through while there's another big political scheme going along in the background of this story so it was really really good it was the only five star i have given this month it's like one of the only five stars i've given this year <laughs> so I adored it. Robert Jackson's writing is so good. The Leviathans are creepy. There is this overarching eeriness to this story because of the Leviathans and what's going on with this. And it seems like our characters are always in danger from outside sources. So I liked it a lot. I highly recommend it. If you haven't read The Tainted Cup, read it. If you have never read anything by Robert Jackson Bennett, do it. <laughs> This has already made it onto my top 
100. You know, I told you guys that that would quickly change. This has been added. Um, I love Robert Jackson Bennett though. I really love Foundry Side, which is up there somewhere. <laughs> and I just want more from Robert Jackson Bennett. I do still need to read The Divine Cities. I have read the first one, but need to read the next two. So yeah, highly, highly recommend this. If you like mystery, because it, it definitely leans more Sherlock and Watson versus fantasy. Next, I read The Last Fee Hunter. Again, this is one I liked. The lore was great. The plot was great. The characters, though, the characters I had a hard time with, especially the main female character. And I don't want to say too much or be too graphic, but there is a scene where she pleases the male main character with no, like foreshadowing that she was going to attempt anything like that and I was like oh okay we're doing that we're doing that sure sure because we don't even know if you actually even like this guy but you're, you're gonna do that yeah that made a whole lot of sense and it kind of left a bad taste in my mouth for the female character because <laughs> obviously I'm just like okay well this is your situation this is what you just asked this main character to do. And now you're doing this. I don't think I like you. <laughs> but we have a fee hunter who's like a demon hunter and they are on a mission and run into a pregnant girl. And the pregnant girl says, hey, can you help me? They don't want to help, but somehow they get tangled up and willing to help this girl as the story progresses and things ensue from there. But I don't want to give any spoilers. Let me just say that I found the plot to be very interesting, but the characters didn't go with what the plot of the story was, and I didn't feel like it fit. They felt very much YA, and then things would happen. The humor would be very YA, and then this adult thing would happen. So there's a lot of juxtaposition about the book that I really just didn't like and didn't vibe with. However, I did end up giving it a 3.5. I just was not impressed. Let's just take that route with it because all of the juxtaposition didn't work for me. The characters didn't mesh with the plot and pretty much gave me a meh feeling about it. I did think the lore was good. Like I said, I did think the plot was good. And so I do see this being an author that I would read in the future. Next, we will get into the books I vlogged for my Patreon picks and the first book that I read would be An Easy Death by Charlene Harris. Now I really like Charlene Harris however I didn't like this book. The reason for that basically is there's a lot of talk about sexual assault, there's a lot of talk about harder topics and stuff like that but then there's no follow-through with it and I didn't like the main character all that much, didn't like the romance in this, this is very different for Charlene Harris and I don't know if she tried to grit this up a bit because we do have a gunny but I didn't like it. <laughs> I didn't like it and another thing that really like put me off to it is that our main character's love interest dies at the beginning of this. It's like very early on in the story. I'm not spoiling things. And then she goes off to help these people that she doesn't want to help because she needs the money and insta love with the guy that she's now helping that she didn't want to help but her love interest just died like i like they couldn't reconcile that in my brain and so i originally gave this three stars i think i'm gonna drop it to two because the more i think about it the more i'm like no there's nothing really i liked about this that could salvage the things that i didn't like about it that also brings me to my one and only DNF for the Patreon vlog. I DNF'd Flames of Mira by Clay Harmon. Oh, okay, so I heard that this was very much like Red Rising, which is why what intrigued me to pick it up. I got about <laughs> halfway through and I was like, there's, there's no, there's nothing that reminds me of Red Rising in this other than a guy coming from the bottom rungs of society into the upper echelons of society. That's it. I don't get the other comparisons to Red Rising. I know that he has powers and he is bound to someone. There was also a very weird sex scene in this too. Very weird, very awkward scene. And I read this and The Last Fee Hunter back to back. And I was like, no, why? Why, why was this a thing? I don't get it. And I think that actually put me off to reading it more than the actual plot of this book. 
I didn't get to a plot in this book. This is very character driven. It relies very much on the world building, by the way. If you love world building, like that can get you through a book. It cannot get me through a book. Not at all. Um, I would recommend Flames of Mira, but I just, there was nothing about this that I was enjoying. So I had to DNF. And then I read Oh Witch in Time by Constance Sayers. Now I was very excited about this. This is one of the books I was anticipating reading this year. And Constance Sayers has hit my radar a few times. I talked about one of my patrons actually likes Constance Sayers and recommended um, The Ladies Secret Circus, something like that. <laughs> You'll have to look into that. I mentioned it in the blog. Um, but I went into this expecting a little bit of like an Addie LaRue type of thing. And we all know Dual Timeline is never going to get a five star for me, from me, but still I was very intrigued by the synopsis and I never intend to read Addie LaRue because I don't like the Schwab, but I was always intrigued by the story and seeing someone else do something very similar, I wanted to read it. Now, again, there are some unlikable characters in this and that did put me off a little bit. I don't always like dislike unlikable characters, but the ones in here were a little roll your eyes kind of bad. And then we have this very bittersweet story that we're told throughout this whole thing and we have a happily ever after ending. And I didn't care for that either. If you're going to tell this bittersweet story, stick with it. Give us the bittersweet ending. And so that's pretty much where I landed with this one, giving it a 3.5 star. I think I did round this one up to a four star on Goodreads because I don't mind giving this a four star. But yeah, that's where I landed with it again in my vlog. Finishing up that vlog, I read The Children of Gods and Fighting Men by Shauna Lawless. And I have to say, I really liked this story. This is one where my enjoyment was what brought the rating down. It had nothing to do with the writing or the plot or the characters. All of that was really well done. It was a little too slow paced for me. It was a little too character focused for me, but I loved the lore. I loved the characters, even though character is not what's going to keep me going in a story. I did like the way that Shauna Lawless gave us more to look forward to, kind of an epic ending where we can be like anticipating the next book. However, I don't think I'm going to be purchasing these books. If I do listen to the rest of the series, it's going to be via audio and I'm going to leave it at that again in my vlog. And then the last book I read is on my pile of books that I'm selling over there. <laughs> Feybound by Sarah El Arifi. I was so looking forward to the story, so looking forward to it. And I had been setting it aside as a rainy day type read. And I just wasn't feeling the greatest. I, I was stressed. I wanted something a little lighthearted, a little fluffy, something that would be a little on the romance side so that I could get out of my own head and just kind of enjoy what I'm reading. <sighs> this isn't really a romance it we have a main character who falls in love for people in power and then gets peepied on <laughs> that's pretty much what happens in Feybound and so expectations not meeting reality here however I did like the lore of Feybound and I would recommend it if you don't mind or you are not looking for romance in your books because this one, while there is some pining, there's not a whole lot of romance to be had. There is some side character romance that happens, but it's not a main focus of the story. This is talking about the immersion of the Fae. Everybody thought that they were extinct and they are figuring out that is not true. And the Fae are coming back into power. And that we our main character is an elf and somehow she binds herself to one of the Fae. And that's pretty much where the story takes off. But I enjoyed some of it. I didn't enjoy other parts of it. Like I said, went in looking for a light, fluffy read with a romance because that's how it's pitched. Didn't, didn't get that. And so I think my disappointment in it came from expectations not meeting reality and the way the book was pitched. I'm currently reading a book that is having the same type of issues. <laughs> or I just finished one that I was having the same type of issues with. So we'll get to that later. Okay, now to talk about some of the things that I have had going on. So I have been helping my friend who's been through a very abusive situation. She was living with us and she just needed some help. And so we helped her out with that. And um, 
she is now happily away from that situation, but she's pregnant. So I'm also <laughs> helping with some of the stuff with pregnancy and planning a baby shower, all of that. And my mother-in-law has moved in also great thing for us, but also really stressful for us. So we are transitioning with that. A lot of changes have happened. My great niece is now going to court for another court case in sexual assault and they want, she wants me to be there with her. And so that's kind of on my mind lately. And if you guys have been following along for some time, you will know that my niece who is 35 got diagnosed with cancer. And so there's just so much going on that's stressing me out. And not a lot of it is actually like affecting me. Like it's obviously affecting my mindset, but it's also causing a bit of burnout. So I've been having burnout with YouTube, haven't really been having burnout with reading. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shift the way I am doing YouTube. I have been really wanting to do a lot more vlogging for you guys. However, with my life in the current state that it is, the stressful state that it is, I don't want to come on here and constantly talk about that stuff. So between my PCOS, my nieces, my best friend, my mother-in-law, I don't feel like that stuff that you guys want a lot of. It feels like a lot of complaining. And so I'm gonna start doing weekly wrap-ups instead. Now, for my patrons who are so kindly still supporting me through all of this, I'm going to give them early access to those videos so they will likely go up on Saturday or Sunday and they will get them Friday. Um, and then I'm still going to be doing the patron buddy read and the vlog for them. So if you are interested in all that stuff that's going on in my life, you are more than welcome to join my Patreon and I will still be vlogging for that. But I'm going to stick with the disappointments, surprises, and hits since I will be doing a weekly wrap up and you guys will be getting them as I read them. Obviously I will go into detail of anything I haven't hit up to that point, but huh, yeah, I need some stress relief. So that's how I feel. I'm going to go about doing that and still stay active on YouTube, still stay active in my reading and still stay active in the community. All right, that's it for my video today. Like, subscribe to all the fun things, and please join my Patreon if you'd like to support what I do on this channel. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.